Hi guys, before we get into this show, this is a quick message to say that this podcast is sponsored by Ant Podcast Management. That's our own company. Ant stands for Amy Nick Thompson. If you or your company want to start a professional podcast or need help running an existing one, then we have got you covered. We can simply provide an editing service or go all the way up to full podcast management. Visit ant-podcastmanagement.com for more information. Enjoy the show. Hello, this is What The Faux Travel Podcast, Series 2, Episode 7, and this one's all about Romania. What's up, guys? Welcome along again to another episode of What The Faux Travel Podcast, and we're going to be talking about Romania and we had a little weekend in Romania because we have found out that Amy, part of your family originally, are from Romania. Apparently so. But we will, I think we're going to try and get a DNA test done, not, not to check that our parents are our parents <laughs> and we're not adopted. But just because you can get that really cool DNA test now where it can tell you where you're from in the world. Yeah, it goes back hundreds of years, yeah. We'll know for sure if I'm from Romania. But apparently that's what my family said. We've got to check this out. And now over the next hour or so, you guys are going to hear all about our time in Romania. Yes, but to start with, uh, we have some pretty cool news. This week, we've been working really hard to set up a website for What The Faux Travel Podcast. So you can find that at www.whatthefaultravelpodcast.com. And on that, you can find a gallery of like loads of photos from our travels. You can contact us on there and you can listen to the episodes from there as well. So we'd really appreciate if you could check it out. Yeah, it's a really cool website. You've done a great job. Like I've literally seen for the last three days straight, you've been working on this thing. And uh, yeah. I think you've done well to bang it out in three days. But yeah, these things take a lot of time and you, you've done a good job. You like come home and I look like stick of the dump. It's <laughs> still in bed at like seven at night, still like eyes burning from looking at the screen. Yeah, but you've been working hard. The website does look sick. So well done. Thanks. So Nick, can we have some shout outs? Yeah, and this month we've got fucking loads. <laughs> like we actually have. People uh, love it. <laughs> I'm going to whip through them as quick as possible because I do appreciate shout outs are only cool for the person who's actually getting the shout out. So let us begin. Greg Noakes got in touch on Twitter. He said he's blitzed all the podcast after a recommendation from his girlfriend, who Amy actually knows from school, but you haven't seen her for years. Natasha, Hi, Natasha. Yeah, Natasha Hawes. But we're really glad that you've enjoyed the show, guys. Thank you so much for listening. He also said he hopes that my football team, Sheffield Wednesday, get promoted this season, but that <laughs> hasn't happened, so oh. <laughs> we won't talk about that anymore. Um, but Greg, Natasha, so glad that you've enjoyed the show. Thank you very much for listening. We also had... Kira L. Curtis on Twitter, get in touch. She said she's just started listening to a full podcast. Definitely worth a listen for all travellers out there. Catching up on the train en route to Manchester. Heath Hudgens on Instagram said our podcast is an absolute riot <laughs> <laughs> and has jumped to the top of his travel podcast list. Oh, banging. Thank you. And he also said to us, we have to travel more so we can do more episodes. Man, I'm with you. We do actually need to travel more. Exactly. Uh, Jose or Jose Mills said on Instagram, love the podcast. Love from Puerto Rico. Oh, nice. It'll be Jose, that... Jose, do you think? It's a J. Jose, yeah. Jose. But that one is exotic. <laughs> Jose, you're my man. Luke teased out on Instagram, said great episode again, talking about the Morocco one. Looking forward to the next one. And then after he sent that message, he said, does this now mean I get a shout out? <laughs> you figured us out completely. That is exactly how you get a shout out. Um, Andrea Reyes said on Instagram, love the podcast. Keeps me entertained and informed at work. Andrea, that is what we are all about. And Matty Ryan on Facebook sent us a message. He said, love the show. Me and my girlfriend have been listening at work and our show is keeping them motivated to save for the next big trip in January 2018. Plus, he said, as luck would have it, they're in London for a weekend in July and they're going to come to our full party. Yes, boy. So, everyone, thank you so much. Shout outs done. Let's move on. Absolutely love it. Well, we need to have some game show facts of Romania. Best part of the show. Lay that sick beat. So, Romania an Eastern European country which is also the largest of the Balkan countries. Romania has dramatic mountain scenery and a coastline on the Black Sea. The name Romania comes from the Latin word Romanus, which means citizen of the Roman Empire. 
After World War II, the country fell under communist rule until 1990. The population is around 20 mil. The capital is Bucharest. The language is Romanian, which is a Romance language, i.e. it's very close to Italian and Spanish. And that is the only country in Eastern Europe to have a Romance language. The currency is the Romanian lei, which means lion. The inspiration for the character Dracula came from Vlad the Impaler, who was a 15th century ruler of an area which is now Romania. His castle, aka Bran Castle, is in the Romanian region of Transylvania. Romania is known for having one of the largest gypsy populations. The Romanian Palace of Parliament in Bucharest is the second largest building in the world. The Pentagon in the USA is the biggest. And the opening scene of the Borat movie was filmed in the Romanian village of Glod, not Kazakhstan. Very nice. Once again, Nick. So that was Game Show Facts. I always like to pick one out. And weirdly... Well, actually, I don't know whether it is weird, but the, I think the most interesting one, and one I did not know before we went to Romania, is that their language is a Romance language. Yeah, so you actually understood. Well, you could get the gist of what Romanians were saying because you can speak Spanish, can't you? Yeah, and like I was talking to the taxi driver in Spanish. It was just really strange. I didn't expect it. I thought they were going to have a, a language that was like kind of Russian-sounding, but a bit Ukrainian. I don't know. Yeah, so that's quite a good tip. I mean, let's be honest, most places in the world you go to, you can probably bet you can communicate with someone in English, but this is actually one of the places where it's better if you can speak Spanish. Yeah. Talking of languages, let's move on to language lessons with Amy. So this month's language lessons with Amy is a little bit different because normally I get a local to record it, but I actually ended up just having a conversation with our tour guide, Elena, about it. She was our tour guide in the capital, Bucharest. So uh, I started by asking her, how do you say hello in Romanian? Buna. Buna. Yes. Okay, and how do you say goodbye? Pa. Pa? With a B or a P? With a P. P. Pa. Or you can say uh, la revedere. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot longer. <laughs> say it again. La revedere. La revedere. Oh, that's yeah. too hard. That's long. It's, it's more official. I mean, pa is like bye. Yeah. And goodbye, mean, you can say la revedere or um, buona sera. Buona sera. And that's yeah. quite Italian. Buona yeah. sera. Yeah. Okay, so how do you say uh, please? Terog. Terog. Okay, and uh, quite an important one, thank you. Mutsumesk. Mutsumesk. Or for the French part, it's uh, merci. But also we say it in Romanian too. It's the shortened part of mulțumesc is merci. Ah, sorry. Yeah, how'd you say sorry? Scusamo. Ah, oh, so that's French. quite Italian. Yeah. Oh, is that, oh. yeah, it's French or Italian? Scusamo is French, isn't oh. it? Oh, okay. Yeah. I was thinking scusi for... Yeah, it's the same, actually. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, cheers. You drink? Norok. Norok. Yeah. Okay. And how do you order a beer? Uh, Obere vorog. Obere Yeah, a beer, please. Nice. <laughs> in, in English. Yeah. <laughs> so now you guys are clued up on the basics of the language and we are going to hear more from Elena later. So Nick, when we first arrived in Romania, we went straight to our hostel, of course, to like drop off our bags and stuff. And it was, I don't know, like seven, eight o'clock at night. Yeah, it was it was dark though, wasn't it? Yeah, it was dark by that point, maybe even nine o'clock. So we thought, you know, we'll just go out for one drink to see what it's like in the town because it was a Friday night and we thought, see what the town's like for when we're back here because we were heading to Transylvania the next day and, uh, yeah, see what the night life is like. And one drink at a bar ended up turning into a whole night out, just you and me getting really drunk. Which was, it was a really, really good night, wasn't it? Really good, yeah. And they're always the best nights. You go out, for one, let's have one or two drinks, and then one thing leads to another. Uh, yeah, it was really good fun. It turned into a, a late one, didn't it? It did. But on the way back from our night out, we were walking back to our hostel, and so we were quite drunk. So I do apologise for our voices in this. But um, I asked Nick, what, like, what do you think? What are your first impressions of Romania? When we first got here, we walked into the main part of town, and we felt a little unsafe. It seemed a bit dodgy a bit scary i never realized how much of a nightlife they have here it was ridiculous like it's it's perfect for stag dudes to be honest it's mainly aimed towards men but the nightlife's crazy like we've had a really good time haven't we yeah such a good time and i agree like when we was walking into town i did feel quite safe unsafe sorry walking past people but there was a lot of kids hanging around the streets which made me think like okay maybe it's safer than we think 
But then we got to the clubs and it was quite dead at first. So they do start late here. It started to kick off about half 11, midnight. But actually after that, it did really kick off. They've got some good DJs here actually. Old school staff. I mean, DJs is a strong word. Always good to hear a drunk video diary update. Oh, I hate my drunk voice. It's so <laughs> gross. Some people might not be able to tell like you're that drunk. I thought you sounded okay, but I can definitely tell. Yeah. You've, you've had quite a few drinks. I go more common and slurry and high pitched. But yeah, it turned into a good night. But then right after, literally just after we finished that recording, we're walking back to our hostel and we're in what looked like a bit of a residential area. You know, we're not we're not in town anymore, there's no bars or clubs. And suddenly we can hear like this music in the distance, like doo, 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 doo. <laughs> and in my head, I thought, oh, wouldn't it be funny if we followed the music? But obviously, we're not going to. Like, the, the yeah. night's done. We've got to get up early tomorrow. Let's go back. I think it was like one in the morning at this point because we'd got drunk and we did our whole kebab stop. And we had to get up, what, eight o'clock yeah. the next day for our tour? Yeah. Really, the night's coming to an end. But we're like, and then I said to you, oh, that, that sounds quite good, actually. And then we kind of looked at each other and, you, and even you were like, should we follow the music? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's, let's fucking do it. Let's, we're crazy. Um, so we, we did. are crazy. We followed it and we got to, it wasn't a house, like it wasn't a bar. I don't even know what it was. It was so strange. Had we, we didn't know whether we'd interrupted a private party or not, but we went up to the door, pushed the door and it was open. So we walked <laughs> in and we went downstairs. Into like some basement. Yeah. And we're like, what are we doing? And then we were greeted by someone that said, oh, like, welcome. But it's like, they started talking to us in Romanian because it's not the kind of place where tourists go. And then we said, oh, we're English, blah, blah, blah. And they said, yeah, come through. And there was a bar there where you can buy drinks. But it just seemed more like a house party than, than a bar. It definitely did, yeah. Yeah, and like you said, there was just locals in there. There was probably like 15 people in the whole space. Yeah, not many. Um, and- but then we were there for the next two hours. And <laughs> just raving was- away. It was so strange but cool. Yeah, it people, was really good. People kept talking to us and you know saying whatever it was in Romanian. And we say, we don't understand. Uh, I don't think anyone actually spoke English there, which was quite refreshing. But when you're trying to have these drunk conversations with people, it was like, look, the music's loud. I can't understand what the fuck you're saying. (laughs) I'm sorry. Just like put your thumbs up at them or cheers your beer to them or something. Yeah, but the DJ that was in there was actually banging. Like he was pulling out all the tunes, really like good electronic music, turning from a bit of like house and a little bit of dubstep. It was really nice. Yeah, he was good. It was really good. Like better than the stuff that we found in the town, like earlier on in the night, like way better. Yeah, the stuff in town was more mainstream, like pop music that we've all heard before. But yeah, we'd been in there for like two hours raving and I really didn't want to go home, but it was like in the back of my head thinking, we need to get up at eight o'clock tomorrow. At this point, it's like half two, three. And I was like, we probably, well, actually... No, I didn't say we should probably go. Why did we leave, Nick? Well, I wanted to leave. Mainly, yeah, because we had to get up and I knew we'd feel shit the next day. But I was getting a weird vibe (laughs) from two guys in there. (laughs) Um, Like, a weird, flirty vibe. Like... (laughs) I, yeah, I was being hit on for sure. And um, I, it's he better asked you he, to go to the toilet with him. He said that like, again, it's not very good English, but he was like, do you want to come with me for something? And I'm like, oh, no, no, it's okay. And then he said, like, oh, no, no money. So I think he was trying to sell me drugs or sell me his cock. Um, no money, no money, just penis. Yeah, but I got a weird vibe and it's a shame it's audio because you can't see my face. But every time I saw this other guy, he kept saying, because he knew we were from England at this point, he's like, he always said hi, but he didn't kind of wave and smile. He always like blew a kiss, <laughs> didn't he? Do you remember? I do remember, yeah. I was like, Amy, we've got to go. And like one of the guys was trying to hit on you as well. Um, <laughs> I just think like they'll just have whatever. Yeah, I was getting a piece of that action. <laughs> but I was like, we got to leave. Like I'm getting a weird vibe. So I know what it's like if you're a girl and there's like some creepy guy kind of lurking. Yeah, it's not nice. Like, it's, but yeah, when you're in a club, like guys, chill out. Yeah, when has is, when is being a creepy guy ever worked? Exactly. Has it ever got you laid before? Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, we got out of Dodge. We left. Got out of a Dodge Town. <laughs> Dodge Town. <laughs> uh, and then we just walked home, had an awful sleep, and then got up really hungover for our tour the next day. Which was a food tour. Not good when you're hungover. No, that's extremely good when you're hungover. Well, yeah, it depends what stage of the hangover you're at. <laughs> yeah, not good for the first stage. 
if you are going to be heading to Bucharest, I've got a really cool bar that you can go to. We just kind of stumbled in there and it's called Then There Was the Show Towel, as in cocktail, but show towel. Catchy. Very catchy. And uh, we'll put a picture up on our Instagram of Nick looking majorly cool in front of it. <laughs> we were quite drunk by this point. But what makes this bar different is you go in and there's a grid menu. So you choose what character you want to be. So you might be like Snow White or... Yeah, well, I remember the James Bond one was, I think, like martini. So that's your that's your alcohol. Yeah, that's your alcohol. And then you pick a juice, which was like a doing word. So like dancing or something, wasn't it? Yeah, or an emotion. So like you can say is dancing and that's apple juice. So you'd have gin and apple juice. And it makes a really good idea, actually. The characters you can have is Captain Hook, James Bond, Loch Ness, Zorro, The Hunter, The Mad Hatter and Fortuna and they're all different drinks and it's just a really cool everything's the same price it's cool yeah and it encourages you just to make these weird mixtures that you'd never normally drink and it's just good fun and let's face it it's a good way to get pissed (laughs) yeah definitely so yeah we'd definitely recommend you check that one out so we're going to be telling you about that food tour that we went on um, later on in the show as well as playing a game which Nick has no idea about we like to keep secrets from each other in the show but we're going to be playing a game about airlines later which is going to be fun. Okay, I've also got something for you as well. A yeah. feature. Lots of secrets on this show, so uh, make sure you keep listening for that. But first off, let's talk about um, Transylvania. So this is quite a famous part of the world, actually, isn't it? Um, all because of Dracula. But Nick, do you want to explain what we were doing there? Yeah, sure. So yeah, Transylvania is like a region, a part of Romania, like a state, if you like. Um, we got the train from Bucharest to a place called Brasov. Yeah, it was like a three-hour journey on the train from Bucharest. Have I said it right? Brasov. Brasov. It's spelled Brasov, but yeah, Brasov. Yeah, so B-R-A-S-O-V. Which is a really picturesque town. Almost looks a bit like an alpine ski town. Um, but actually, I think you can ski nearby, can't you? And I must admit, when I first got there, I thought, oh, this does look a lot nicer than Bucharest. And it was very beautiful. Yeah, a lot prettier. And the cool thing about places in Romania, because I've seen it in other places, not just Brasov, is, um, you know, the Hollywood sign where the big white letters saying Hollywood, they have that in Romania. So there's a Brasov one mm. and there must be a Bucharest one, but we didn't see it. I don't know, but there's a big Brasov one which looks over the town. Really cool. Very nice town. We tried to go to a restaurant to have a meal the first night we arrived. We were actually there over the weekend of Easter. It's a really religious country. They had some sort of thing going on in the square, some ceremony which meant all the restaurants closed. And we jokingly said, like, oh, well, worst case, there's a KFC here. They're, like, open 24-7. Even that closed at, like, 8 p.m. Like, shit, what are we going to do? We eventually found somewhere after. It was a bit stressful, wasn't it? But that wasn't Brashov's fault. It's because it was Easter. Yeah, we kind of checked out, like, not exaggerating, about 10 restaurants. They all turned us away. It was really strange. So once we did eat, we had quite a nice meal, but then we were tired. It was late at this point. We went to bed. The next day, we were up, 9 o'clock, we already had a tour booked to take us to Bran Castle, a.k.a. Dracula's Castle. Uh, so Brasov is the kind of place people go to then go to see Bran Castle. It's a bit like when people go to Machu Picchu, they go to Cusco first. It's like the town you go to. The best bit about the tour wasn't Dracula's Castle. It wasn't being in like the Transylvanian mountains. It was because of this guy. My mama, she told me, don't worry about your size. <laughs> She said, boys like a little more booty to hold at night. <laughs> booty, booty. <laughs> and that legend was our tour guide, Dan. <laughs> booty, booty. Booty, booty. That's my favourite bit. He was so funny. Yeah, like driving the minivan, singing along. This guy was he was a legend. So funny. He really was. He just made the whole tour entertaining, not just because of his singing. He's just... Really funny, he's got amazing English, he knows his stuff. And yeah, he's just a really good tour guide. And it was really sweet that he was working that day as well, because it's Easter, being a really religious country. His wife was at home cooking the really traditional meal while he was out working on a day that is all about family. So it was really sweet that he spent the day with us. Definitely. On the tour, he picked us up from Brasov and was driving us to Bran. Um, But on the way, we made a couple of stops and he stopped in this other place. I'm not too sure the name, actually. But we went into this church and, like I said, it was an Easter day, so it was really quiet. Everybody was in their houses. Like, no shops were open or anything. And we're going into this church and we were, like, not really feeling it too much just because it's not our thing. But Dan was, like, standing there and he was like, i got a surprise for you guys. 
and he banged this one out. Maria Grazia Plena. Maria Grazia Plena. Voice of an angel. It really was. He's really good at singing. Yeah, he was a bit of a lad, but yeah, talented, good singer. So yeah, after that, we headed you know, to the main event, which was going to Bran Castle, a.k.a. Dracula's Castle. So it was Bram Stoker, who was the author of Dracula, and um, yeah, it's really famous. I'm sure if you guys see a picture of it, you'd recognise it straight away. Um, but when we got there, it might be because it was Easter, I don't know, lots of tourists, but long queue to get in. Dan sorted us out. He went straight to the front and got some tickets for us. Uh, but the weather wasn't good. It was raining. So be prepared. You might have to wait in a queue, bring an umbrella just in case, which we didn't do and we got wet. Yeah. Then when you go in the castle, I mean, you know, if you're a fan of castles, it's impressive. Like, <laughs> we thought it was, what, why are you laughing? <laughs> Who's like a castle fan? <laughs> I'm sure loads of people are. Like think castles are really sounds cool. Sounds really weird. But it looked it looked really good. And you go in and he takes you around all the different rooms and he explains the people that used to live there. Vlad the Impaler, who I mentioned earlier on my game show Facts, lived there. And we'll talk to Dan about that in a minute. But it was really impressive. A lot of information that Dan chucked to us, didn't he? Yeah, and it was really good hearing about the royal family that lived in that castle as well. Because you don't know until you get to a country. You can hear who the king and queens are, but you don't know what the country think of those people. And Dan really went into that. So he was explaining how one of the princesses, like everyone adores her and she's the most beautiful woman from that country. And like everyone just loves her. So it's really good to get an idea of what the country think of their royals. For sure. So yeah, we learned all sorts of information and we got to walk around a lot of inside the castle it was all very impressive. So while we were there, we had a little chat with Dan and we asked him why Vlad the Impaler was the inspiration for the character Dracula. Because uh, Vlad was a savage ruler and he had this uh, favourite method was to impale people, to put uh, on a stake through, through their bodies. He was inspired because uh, he had a Hungarian friend who told him about uh, what happened in Transylvania, about also the, that uh, sick countess Elizabeth Bathory that killed 600 virgins. And um, he put it everything in a, in a science fiction that in, in the 1900s he, uh, he made a, and later become a bestseller, his, his book. Yeah. Bram Stoker, the guy who wrote Dracula, he's never been here before, has he? So, so why did he choose this as the location for his story? He's never been here, but he has been in London. And as I've told, he had a Hungarian... Uh, a Hungarian friend who told him about uh, Elizabeth Bathory. And of course, the, all the, the Hungarian wall at that, that time and the Germans, the Germans, uh, Vlad uh, fought against and impaled a lot of Germans. And he was a character as a, a very wild uh, known character. And there were a lot of legends about him. He went through the, the old legends. He found the old legends. So he was in London and he, uh, he maybe saw a, a imprinting with a castle that he described. Yeah, but everything was, uh, was science fiction. So that's why the, um, the action of the story was not here. It was somewhere else. Everything was made up from pieces from, from different uh, parts. So that was the last we're going to hear of Dan this episode. He made our day that day. He made the trip. And I'm sure you'll agree he's made this episode as well. He's a star <laughs> of the episode. And that tour was booked for the website brasovdaytours.com. And they were really good. We'd recommend them. Thanks to Dan for coming on the show. Nick, we have now got your feature, which I don't know what it's about, so I don't know what to say. We <laughs> I have. don't know how to intro this. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a little... I'm going to tell you a little story. Okay. Okay, now... We were thinking because of Dracula, vampires, we were thinking this was going to be our Halloween special episode. Yeah. But October's a long way off and we're like, it's May now. We went in April to Romania, so we thought we'd do the episode while it's fresh. So I'm going to tell you a little bit of a spooky story. Oh no. Okay. I hate scary stuff. First things first, we're going to turn the lights off in the studio. Oh, seriously? Yeah. Oh, Can you turn, no. You're close to the light. Can you turn it off? Oh, man. Nothing's going to happen. Are you going to like make me jump? No, nothing's going to happen. Shout at me. No, it's just a bit of a spooky... It's just a, it's an interesting, spooky story. The lights are off. Oh, no. It's still... It is quite dark in here, but there's still light outside. People are going to think that there's no one in the studio and then look at us and be like, what the hell are you doing? Okay. You ready for the story? <laughs> no. Cue a bit of spooky music. <laughs> So this story is called The Tower. Okay. 
the universe, the Milky Way galaxy, Earth, Romania. <laughs> this is where our story is set. More specifically, a tower that no one has ever noticed before in a small Transylvanian town. One man has noticed this tower. He often walks his dog on night walks. He sees this tower and it's always dark from bottom to top. Windows are all blacked out. And he always thought, I wonder, I wonder what that tower is. Now, one day a year, Halloween Eve, he sees one of the lights are on in this tower. And you can see there's a slight shadow moving. Oh, I don't like this already. Okay. But he sees, for the first time he sees this, he ignores it. Same time next year. Same thing, exact same thing. This man starts to obsess about this tower. He talks about it to his wife, to his work colleagues. Everyone thinks he's going a bit crazy. But he's obsessed. Okay, so one year, he's walking his dog. Again, Halloween Eve, the light's on. There's a shadow moving. So he plucks up the courage to go check it out. Grab his torch, knocked on the door. Oh my God, that's horrible. Nothing. The door wouldn't open. He tried to push it and pull it. In frustration, he picks up a rock, throws it, hits a statue of a gargoyle, and the door opens. Oh, shit. It was dark, cold. <laughs> I love how your voice is getting more intense. <laughs> he climbed the spiral staircase. Eventually, he arrived at the top. Walk up the stairs seemed to take forever. As this story. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Finally, after years of curiosity, he's going to find out what is at the top of this tower. He gets to the door. On the other side of the door, he's going to find out what's been going on. He pushes the door open and... Ah! Oh my God, you said you weren't going to do this. <laughs> is that the end of the story? <laughs> That's the story. That's so shit. Are you serious? You proper jumped there, didn't you? <laughs> I actually hate you so much. Did you make up that story yourself? <laughs> no, I'm going to give full credit. I heard this story on another podcast called The Man Cast. You're stealing another podcast no, content. But I thought it would be an interesting idea. I'm sure they didn't make it up. They probably found it from somewhere. But full credit goes to The Man Cast. That's where I heard the story. Well, The Man Cast, that was shit. <laughs> <laughs> it made you jump. Can I turn the light back on? <laughs> yes, now? you can. <laughs> you proper jump your face <laughs> the funny thing is is the computer's right in front of my face so I've got like a light you know when you get a torch and put it under your face to look scary that yeah, yeah. must be what I look like yeah I thought about doing the whole phone under my face thing but I didn't bother I'm glad you didn't do you like my story um not really no <laughs> I, I want to know what was behind the door can you just tell me like for argument's sake. I don't know. Well, make it up. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? Whenever we watch a film and the, the ending's basically like, ooh, make it up for yourself, you get really angry. Yeah, I hate that. That's what you've, that's what you've done to us. Yeah, but I don't know. It's not a real... I don't know. Okay. Um, it's Dracula. It's Vlad the mm. Impaler. I actually thought you was going to put like some sexual twist on it where there was like this girl in there or something. No, that's... Like the shadow moving was like her dancing or something. But why once a year before Halloween? Because she gets hot over Halloween. Who doesn't? <laughs> um, right, we need to talk about Bucharest before playing my game. So we had a Bucharest walking tour, or walking food tour, sorry, mm -hmm. with Elena, who was super, super nice. She was a really good tour guide as well. We proper lucked out on our tour guides in Romania. And she definitely knew her stuff. She was really good with all of her knowledge. And we booked it through Urban Adventures, which we would definitely recommend to you as well. So we started by meeting our tour guide, Elena, at one of the like main hotels in the town. And we were on the group with two other women as well from London, which was quite cool. So we got to have a chat with them as well. And we started off, it was more like a walking tour at first. Like we didn't do much food and we was walking around and there's different quarters to the centre, like there is in most capital cities where you have like your Jewish quarter and stuff like that. Yeah, there was also um, an Armenian part of town because um, she explained how over the years that part of Europe has been home to like lots of people from all sorts of different countries, which I think is quite cool. And she actually mentioned that over the years they've pretty much all got along really well living in the same city together. You'd think there'd be a lot of conflicts and dis disputes and stuff like that, but um, no, Bucharest... 
has for a long time been home to people from all different parts of the world, which is cool. Yeah, because back then I think she said that their view on things was, okay, if you're going to come into our country and you're going to help us and you're going to bring your businesses here and your money, then fine. Like, as long as you're here working, that's fine. So they're quite um, welcoming people. Yeah, good way to think about it, I think. But walking around Bucharest, you couldn't help but notice a lot of the abandoned buildings, could you? Yeah, back when it was a communist country, basically the government said, hey, we want all your houses, give us your property, which is so heartbreaking. Yep, you didn't own it anymore. It was kind of that everyone's the same, communist, yeah. Everyone has kind of nothing, but at least everyone's the same. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, which is crazy because when you've worked all your life and earned all of that money and you've bought something that really means a lot to you and homes your family, you don't want to give it away. Like, So you can understand how really angry all the, all the people were. But then once the government took it, they didn't do anything with these houses and they haven't then sold them on back to the people when, when the government changed again, so it's not communist anymore. And so everywhere you walk, there's these abandoned buildings, you know, paints coming off of them. You can tell no one's done any work to them. They're half falling down, there's trees growing inside them like it's it's actually weirdly pretty but when it's everywhere it's a bit like whoa Mm, i know what you mean but even if the people were given their houses back the money they'd have to spend on all the maintenance to get them back to how they used to be uh, is going to be so expensive but yeah you saw a lot of that around bucharest i mean parts of it i thought were really nice but yeah parts of it were quite run down and looked in a bit of state but it was quite a cool city good to see um but then the first place we stopped was pretty cool like calf which It looked like it used to be like an abandoned house and they just turned it into a cafe, which is really good. The government are in talks and trying to work out projects of how they can utilise these abandoned houses. And that's why this is now a cafe. So someone who's super rich has sort of bought it and turned it into a business. And there's going to be lots of those popping up over the next few years, which is really cool. Very cool. And yeah, Torgard Elena, she ordered us some traditional Romanian food. It's all revolved around meat, really. Meats and cheeses and breads. Meats and cheeses. And pickles. And it was about 11 in the morning, I think. And this is when we were a bit hungover. She just said, right, who wants to try some local beer? And you and the other two ladies were like, no fucking way. I was like, well, I suppose I should while we're here. Um, But it was actually very delicious. I liked it. While we were there as well, like you said, we had that platter of meats and cheeses. And they had like their own pickle which is a Romanian pickle. Do you remember? I remember, yeah. It's good. Um, Because like, what was in it? It was almost like a a red coleslaw pickle. I don't really know how to explain it, but it was really good. It's like some sort of chutney, very tomato-y. Yeah. Um, I don't know how to describe it, but yeah, you just kind of spread it on your bread. It was good. A chutney pickle, that's a good way of describing it, I think. Yeah. From then on, she uh, Elena took us on the tram to sort of see the rest of the place. We were doing more of a walking tour. And um, it was one of those days where the weather just kept changing as well. So, like, sometimes it was really hot in the sun and then other times it turned freezing. So I just kept having to undress and dress myself the whole time. I probably had about 50 clothes changes. But still, it was a really nice day. It was really good. After the tour, we had a little chat with Elena and we, we asked her, like, what's the best thing to do in Bucharest? Come here and just stroll the streets. I mean, while you're walking, you probably will end up in a place or a situation that it really make your day in a good sense or a bad sense. But it's an experience. I mean, you will find somebody that will direct you to something, to a pub or to a theater, or uh, probably some beggars are going to ask something from you but uh, you will find out that they are nice people and uh, if you are open they are open and um, actually the more important thing is Bucharest is to interact with uh, Romanians and all, all of the young ones old ones middle-aged ones it's a really nice uh, attitude and uh, humor not uh, a lot of uh, old people don't know English. Uh, young people, all of them speak English, but it's very nice that they will try to make them and um, un- be understand and so on. Very good. So uh, we've been on a, a food tour today. How would you sum up Romanian food? Meat. <laughs> it's all about uh, animals. It's all about uh, um, very few uh, condiments. I mean, uh, you just have the meat and the mustard and the cheese and it's not so it's not like italian cuisine where you have a lot of herbs and a lot of uh, uh, scents scents and so on Uh, but uh, romanians are in love with meat 
So we had them sausages earlier, the, yeah. like the fat ones. What mm -hmm. are they called? Meat. Can you explain what they are? Yeah, they are uh, practically they are uh, skinless sausages because um, some 100 years ago, somebody uh, in the old town, in one of the places there where they were preparing food for everybody, for the local market and so on, they um, didn't have uh, the skin of the sausage the, that is made from intestines. intestines yeah. Yeah. There were so many people, so many people that wanted to eat and they said, okay, we'll do it without uh, the skin. And that's how the skinless sausages were made up out of necessity but uh, uh, the tradition remained and we are eating them even now okay and they were delicious with mustard yeah. so really good. nice we mentioned to you earlier that a long long time ago uh, amy's family goes all the way back to traditional roman gypsies yeah. um, what's the general attitude of you know romanians towards the gypsy people uh they are um uh, racist yeah. The, the, the attitude is pretty much racist because, um, as I've told you earlier, they are not fully integrated into the community. The history of gypsies is one of slaves that uh, were at one moment liberated and they didn't know what to do with the, their um, uh, freedom because they didn't have education, they didn't have access to education. And uh, now... Uh, we deeply try, there are a lot of NGOs that try uh, to give education to the gypsy people that are not so segregated. I mean, they, you won't find neighborhoods, only neighborhoods uh, full of gypsies. Gypsies are everywhere, as exactly ha as Romanians are everywhere. I mean, uh, because uh, the uh, architecture of Bucharest, you can have a really expensive new block of flats here and right next to it you will have an abandoned place that is squatted by gypsy or uh, 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 there it's a house that is their property but uh, they don't have money to uh, renovate it and it's decaying so it's a uh, it's very mingled the situ situation is very mixed and um, uh, that's why these NGOs really uh, fight for education so that uh, gypsies are uh, accepted more and more in Romanian society. Nice, yeah, and can you just tell us uh, a little bit about the company you work for, the tour company, and how can we find you? Yeah, the company is called Interesting Times Bureau, and it's a local company that uh, has a few employers and more guides. The, all the guides are local. Uh, this tour that you've been today, uh, which is called the Bohemian tour, it's uh, under the Urban Adventure umbrella. And uh, you know the Urban Adventure tours that it's all about going local. Uh, soon all of the tours from Interesting Times Bureau are going to be under the Urban Adventure tour because it's, uh, it's important to be in a really uh, big family because this way uh, it's, not, it's not going to be so hard to find our tours on Google and so on. So if you just Google Interesting Times Bureau or Urban, Ta Urban Adventure Romania, you will find all of our 10 tours. I think there are more, 10 or more tours. At one point on the tour, Elena took us to a food market and it was really interesting to see. Strangely, it was like all men, wasn't it? We we commented on how like where are all the women? And I think maybe because it's quite a traditional country, the women are probably at home. Yeah, that's that's a really good point. And actually, when we was talking about earlier, when uh, right at the start of the show, when we was in Bucharest and we got drunk, that was one of the main things I realised when we were walking through Bucharest on a night out. There was probably like a ratio of twelve men to one woman. 12 to 1. Yeah, it was easily like 90% men. Yeah, and the one woman that was there was the one that was like dancing in the windows in her underwear. It's actually, it's so strange because it's such a religious country, but the nightlife is so based around stag do's. I would say hen do's as well, but I don't think so. It's no. stag do's. And when you go there, like to lure you into clubs, they've got these girls dancing in the windows. And it was actually one of the most sexualized places I've ever been. It was really strange. You wouldn't expect that of Romania. Well, I didn't expect it from Romania. I'd expect that from Poland because that's a really big place for stags and also Prague. But I didn't expect that from Romania. Yeah, I'm completely the same. We were both a bit shocked, weren't we? When we were out that night, it's like, is this really, is this what kind of husband and wife should do? Go out for a night in Bucharest? But actually, we did have a good time. But, hey, who's that lady? <laughs> but no, it, it was, I agree, it was a bit shocking. Well, I wouldn't say shocking, I just find it weird. 
Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, so back to the food market. We first walked um, around. It's kind of like an indoor market. It's it's like what I know it used to be like in England. So them old school markets where people are, you know, shouting out, selling their fruit and veg on these stalls and, and just like it is in India now, actually. And then we walked up the top floor and walked around and like you said there's all those men and then we had those bits of cheese and sausage man we had a lot of cheese and meat that day we like did. if anything it was all good but if anything at the end of the day i felt like we had too much cheese and meat which didn't think was possible and then after that we went to check out a like i don't know what you call it not it's not a calf it's a traditional romanian restaurant place yeah, it's kind of part of the market wasn't it it's a bit yeah. where you sit down yeah, so we all sat down together and got a drink that was kind of cherry flavoured, wasn't it? Was it a shot? Or was uh, it just a just a bit bigger than a shot? But yeah, this alcoholic cherry drink. I really liked it. Weirdly, it's not something I would normally like, but is you know when you blend vodka with fruits or like jelly babies, and you make that kind of yeah. thing like that. It's a bit like that, but cherry and it, but really strong. It was strong, but it was good. But then after having. A few beers back at the other place. I had like yours and the other ladies as well. And then that shot as well, thinking it's still early in the day and I've had too much to drink. Yeah, and we had the best sausages I've ever had in my life. They're skinless sausages. They're the ones that Elena was talking about in our interview with her, the skinless sausages. They were amazing. They were good. Dipped in mustard. Yes. Oh, yes, boy. (laughs) (laughs) Nick, it's now my turn to give you a surprise of a game. Yay. Are you going to make me jump? Um, no, I'm I'm going to be kinder to you. You just need to guess things on my game. So um, I don't actually know what to call this game, so I think we're going to come up with a name after. We'll, we'll decide it. I wanted to call it like Flight Attendant or Take Your Seats because it's based on airlines. I didn't really know, but we'll talk about that after. Attention please. This is the final call. Departing passengers should proceed to gate number 23 immediately okay so it's a bit like charades so it's a bit visual but i'm going to explain what i'm doing as i'm doing it so that you guys can guess as well as nick one of our budget airlines in england have released a load of signals that they use to communicate with each other on the airline so you know when you have one flight attendant at the top of the plane and the other down the aisle and they're serving the food yeah they need to talk to each other about what they're doing rather than like shout down the plane so there's a few things, and I want you to guess what these signs are for, okay? Okay. Okay, so I've got ten here, all right? The first one is I'm going to put up one finger and then do chicken arms. What do you <laughs> think that means? Um, yeah, they need more chicken. <laughs> <laughs> like they've run out of chicken lunch, chicken meals. Okay, so that means I want one chicken Caesar baguette. <laughs> one chicken Caesar baguette. Yeah. Okay. Okay, number two, I think... I reckon you'll you'll definitely guess this one wrong, but I think everyone would guess this. So I'm going to make a number one with my finger, a T with my hands, and then I'm going to stir with one finger. Yeah. Um, they need more sugar for tea. No, that's a good answer, actually. But uh, it means I need one more tomato soup. What? Oh, tea for tomato. Yeah, because yeah. tea, you'd think cup of tea, wouldn't you? Yeah. I've never noticed them making hand signals to each other. I haven't noticed to this degree, but I knew they like communicated yeah. in some way. Um, so how about this? So I'm rolling my two hands round each other. Swap with me while I go to the toilet. No, that's a good one though. Uh, that means veg wrap. Veg wrap. Need a wrap. veg wrap. <laughs> okay. Okay, this one's my favourite one. So um, making a number one with my hand, and then pushing up my nose. What could that mean? Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, when you push up your nose, you look like a pig's nose. Is it like another ham sandwich? Oh, bacon baguette. Yes. Really good. Well done. Nailed it. Okay, so imagine I'm like standing on the aisle. I'm pointing to my left or to my right. Doesn't matter. Pop. So I pop something in my hand. Um, just want like more fizzy drink, more Cokes. Close. It means... I'm pointing at a couple. I'm like, there's been a proposal. Pop the champagne. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. I wonder how often they have to use that. Who's going to propose on a budget airline flight? (laughs) That's true. Sorry if any of you have done that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Actually, no, this one's my favourite. So you can point to it either way. Point to the passengers. And then you put your fingers up on your head. And then you make a bitchy look. 
So you look like you've got rabbit ears at the moment and you make a bitch. Rabbit look. ears? What kind of rabbit have you seen? You like big ears. No, I'm not um, doing flappy ears. I'm doing s- sticks on my head. Oh, like devil? So like you're saying someone's a difficult customer. Oh, close. Saying they're a stag do. So you've oh, made like stag. stag antlers on your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but like a bitch, you look like, oh, here we go. Yeah, I bet they must be really annoying, stag do's. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so number seven is... I'm going to cradle my arms and then drink a drink. Um, you want like baby formula, milk. Close. What would you do with it? What would a flight attendant need to do with baby milk? Uh, heat it up. There we go. Wow. Very okay. nice. Okay, right. So you point, uh, number eight, you point either side. So you're pointing at a passenger and then you do this sign. It's so hard to explain what I'm doing. Like charade movie it, sign. Yeah, so movie and then... Shrug my shoulders. Or like you don't know. Yeah. Um, so point at someone, movie sign, shrug your shoulders. I'm going to go with, like, because all phones have camera, like cameras on them. I reckon someone's like lost their phone. That's, that's, a, good, <laughs> that's a good answer, actually. No, it's saying that passenger there is a movie star and I can't remember their name. Oh, wow. <laughs> so basically get over here and have a look. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, number nine. So I'm going to point behind me or in front of me, pointing straight to the top of the plane. I'm going to make my movements with my hands like, tra- like a flat draw. Trapped in a box. And then I'm going to shrug my shoulders. Um, they're saying they don't know if the pilot is awake. Oh, that would be scary, wouldn't it? I think that is worth shouting down the plane. <laughs> what, is that? what does it mean? Then? It means someone's stuck in the toilet. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. And number 10 is, um, again, I'm going to point at you, point at me, point at the back of the plane, point to the front of the plane, and then, wait, I need to stand up for this one. Okay. I'm going to thrust my <laughs> hips, <laughs> and I'm going to say, shrug my shoulders. Someone's having sex in the toilet. <laughs> this is one that I made up for myself. <laughs> oh, so it's not real. And it means, do you want to join the Mile High Club? <laughs> oh, got ya. I'll, I'll tell you what, like, not just sexual stuff but i bet so much happens with the staff on a plane that we have no idea about oh 100 percent. so i know that on training they do initiations for flight attendants and one of the things that they do is when they fly the plane and there's no passengers they get the trays that you eat off of and they sit on them and as they take off they have to <laughs> um, float down the aisle on the tray <laughs> amazing it sounds so good i definitely want to do i might just like get a job as a flight attendant just so I can do the training. I bet they do so much fun stuff. That was a good game, actually. I enjoyed that. I'm going to look out for their movements, and you guys should have a look, look out as well in future. Uh, but, oh, my God, I bet so much happens. Like, very quickly, this reminds me a little bit of, you know, when you're at school and you take an exam and you've got your exam monitors, you've got some, they're either teachers or parents who are volunteering, just yeah. making sure everyone's doing their work. They play games, don't they? Oh, God. It, they say, like, go stand next to the kid who you think is the ugliest in this room <laughs> and they'll walk around casually and just stand next to a kid. Or, you that know, so much fun. first to get pregnant. Or, yes, that's a big one. Yeah, who, who's going to be, who thinks going to be famous. Yeah. Uh, so much stuff goes on in environments like this that we have no idea about. I'm trying to think if my teacher ever stood by me. I wonder <laughs> what they were saying about me. Oh, yeah. yeah, so I didn't know what to call that game. Flight attendants. Oh, okay, yeah. Or um, um, please take your seat. So, like, what does an air hostess normally say? I was trying to think yeah air hostess charades um flight attendant charades maybe mm, instead of sign language fly language fly Ooh, language oh shit that is good there you go it came out of nowhere fly language fly language that is really good i really like that okay so that was fly language let's sum up romania now so we went to bucharest and Brasov and bran what did you think of the country as a whole yeah as a whole Really interesting place. I really liked it. I recommend anyone go. That part of Eastern Europe, it is an adventure. Like, let's be honest, on this show, we're here to be honest. Because it is an Eastern European country, yeah, it's a bit rough around the edges. Some parts might look a bit run down or maybe a bit scary. But I, I don't think it's as dangerous as it, as it looks. I think it's actually on the whole very safe. Places like London are probably more dangerous. But the countryside in Transylvania that we saw, beautiful mountains, Amazing. And place like Brasov was a nicer town than Bucharest. But yeah, I would recommend going. Really cool, interesting place. I would give it out of 10 for, yes, a destination to get away from home and see. I would give it 
Actually, I'll give it a 7 out of 10. I think that's a very respectable, good score. Yeah, we've been to more beautiful places, but I really liked it. Okay, I feel pretty much the same as you. Beautiful countryside, loved it. I did enjoy Bucharest, but um, for me personally, there wasn't anything that grabbed me about the country. There wasn't anything that I'm like, oh, like, yeah, you've got to go to that. That was amazing. Obviously, we didn't see the whole country, so I'm only judging it on what I saw. And I would recommend anyone go. Please go because you might have a different opinion to me. You might like different things to me. But also everyone needs to experience all the countries to make their own decision. For me, and I'm sorry if anyone is like quite religious and you listen, I'm a, I'm quite a big atheist. So the amount of religion that was sort of not pushed on me is the wrong word, but like I was sort of taken to was a bit too much for me and that's why I didn't really enjoy it that much and also I like it was a bit strange for me to meet people my age and rather than asking me oh what have you seen what have you done like we were asked questions like oh have you seen my favorite church have you seen this church which is actually incredibly cute but for me that's just quite strange uh, for someone a similar age to me so um I don't know I'm gonna give a lower score than you only because I don't have any like burning desire to go back I had a great time had a great weekend but I mean there's better places for me so a seven out of ten would be like somewhere like Indonesia where I've been and I would like to go back but I'm not burning to go so I'd actually give this a five out of ten I think Okay, but I find even if you go somewhere, you don't really like it that much. It's just cool to see somewhere different. Oh, God, I'm so glad that I went and I'm so happy that I've seen it. And the people, I really want to stress that the people are so, so nice and I loved it. But the only reflection on the five is that I've been to places that I prefer. That's all it is. Exactly. And one other thing I wanted to add, and, you know, let's also be honest, there's a reason why a lot of people in Eastern Europe as a whole come to Western Europe because they're looking for, you know, jobs and, and a better life. And even our tour guide Lennis, she said a lot of her friends have moved to the UK, Germany or the States, you know, and they're now enjoying better lives. And I think a lot of that is down to, we heard from a few different people that like, for many years now, the government's been quite corrupt. So yeah. tax money that should be spent on infrastructure just disappears. So that is why the country has a few problems, but yeah, still a really interesting place to go to and see. Yeah. And Dan was saying, our tour guide was saying that um, for young people, it's really cool to be German. So for them, like if they wear German clothing or they're saying that they're going to Germany on holiday or moving there, that's like a really cool thing for them. It's a little bit like in India. The kids want to be Western, don't they? They want to wear Western clothes. Yeah. So that was Romania. Guys, don't forget that we have our faux party coming up very, very soon. 1st of July. It's going to be in London. It's a Saturday. Best thing to do if you're not planning on coming at the moment, but you want to, Get on our brand new website, www.whatthefotravelpodcast.com. Contact us, send us an email. We'll give you all the details. But Saturday, 1st of July, 2017, let's make it a big night. Yeah, so there's an event page on the website. And also, if you like us on Facebook, then you can find the event on there as well. So just put attending because you know you want to be there. It's going to be good. So our next episode on the 15th is going to be another mini episode. And this one is going to be us talking to a guy called Nas Daily, who you can check out on Facebook. And he basically makes one minute videos of him traveling around the world. And he's really inspiring. And we're going to talk to him about what's the best ways to meet locals. So we will see you then. My mama, she told me, don't worry about your size. Booty, booty. Don't forget, you guys can get in touch with the show. You can send us an email. Our address is whatthefoepodcast at gmail.com. Fo is spelt P-H-O. On Twitter, we are at foepodcast. Also, check us out on Instagram and Facebook as well. With all this social media, this podcast doesn't just come in your ears, we also come in your eyes. Lads, 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 lads. <laughs> this podcast was sponsored by Ant Podcast Management. For help getting your professional podcast up and running, visit ant-podcastmanagement.com.